Hello and welcome to Aspen Mastermind for October 27th, 2021. Aspen Mastermind is a 501c3 and our purpose is to inform and inspire people with curiosity and an open mind. I'm Greg Lewis, moderator for today's Zoom, and thank you for joining us. Today's presenter is Dr. Johnny Heward, the Chief Scientific Officer and Director of the Stedman Philippon Research Institute, the research arm of the Stedman Clinic which will open its more than 61,000 square foot new $62 million state-of-the-art clinic and research center in Willits, just outside of Basalt, on March 1st. Dr. Heward is an internationally distinguished scientist who grew up in a tiny village nine hours by car northeast of Montreal. Destiny for boys there is to become a fisherman, and Johnny Heward did. He fishes in the sea of scientific knowledge, and he is changing the world with what he catches. Let's take a look. The beginning was at the end. Johnny Heward grew up in the province of Quebec, Canada, in the small village of Gispese, which means the end of the land, where the St. Lawrence River empties into the North Atlantic. His first love was Canada's national sport, yet the boy with the wise eyes and curious mind would distinguish himself through science, not slap shots. Though his love of the game and its code of tenacity and teamwork inspire his scientific discovery today. But the underpinning of all science is loyalty to truth, and that came from his adoring parents who instilled the essential elements of character and integrity. And Johnny Heward honored their love with a continuing series of scientific achievements that distinguished his entire family. He was the first Heward to ever go to college, and he's been a first mover ever since. The esteemed leaders in science and medicine who mentored him early in his career knew this, and they knew their student would surpass them. That was validated in 2004, when Dr. Heward received the esteemed Kappa Delta Young Investigator Award for his discovery of muscle-derived stem cells. Pioneering achievements followed in gene therapy, tissue engineering, and regenerative medicine. As greatness begets greatness, Dr. Heward selflessly shares his knowledge through a rare blend of personal compassion and professional collaboration. No wonder he is respected as a thought leader and thoughtful leader. Attributes honored when he recently received his second Kappa Delta Award, an unprecedented achievement, this time for outstanding orthopedic research. Tonight, we celebrate greatness and humility, success and relentless pursuit. Tonight, we pay tribute to the boy from the little village who became the man changing the world. Dr. Heward, it's a pleasure to have you with us, and I apologize for the uh, technological issues. Obviously, you weren't in charge of that. Um, you're, um, you're coming to, Va- to, to Aspen from Vail. Do you want to talk about what's, what's happening in Aspen or in Willits? and uh, why that's significant to this audience in particular? Yes, so uh, first of all, thank you for having me. Um, I hope you can hear me okay. Um, Yes, so I think this is very exciting for us because, you know, we are, you know, opening, you know, a um, a laboratory that's going to be in Willet, you know, in in very close to Aspen. But we're also going to do a a lot of stem cell research in Aspen, you know, uh, we're going to do platelet rich plasma, bone marrow aspirate. And very excitingly, you know, uh, a few weeks ago, we just got awarded a $2 million award from the Department of Defense, where, you know, uh, 100 patients will be treated, you know, after hip atroscopy where we will inject, you know, uh, platelet-rich plasma and using different drugs that we're using now to improve the healing process. And we have decided to do 50 patients here in Vail and the other 50 patients is going to be done in, in Aspen, Basalt area. Um, so Aspen is going to be a, a real facility, a, a real clinic. 
And uh, you are you going to be moving back and forth between Aspen and Vail, or how are you going to staff in Aspen? So that's a very good question. Right now is my plan is to move people back and forth, you know, for in the beginning to see it, to get started. But what I want to do is I want to do something unique for Aspen. I don't want to reproduce what we're doing in Vail in Aspen. So what I want to do in Aspen is something very unique um, in the area of stem cells. We would like, we're talking with the Food and Drug Administration right now to, stem cell the stem, to, to set up a stem cell banking, something that's going to be unique. And, and as you know, Greg, you know, we're very excited about the LT aging program that we have been you know, uh, developing over the last five years. And again, I mean, the goal here is to make you age healthier and better. I used to tell people that, you know, we're not going to bring you to 25, although it would be great for all of us. I think that the science is not there, but the science is, can we take you today and make you age healthier and better from now on by using all the research finding that we are, you know, um, that we are, you know, um, having and and to try to apply this to the uh, clinical population. And, and this is very exciting. And I think Aspen, you know, will have a huge benefit of this new technology that is coming in to make you age healthier and better from now on. Um, well, we'll talk about stem cells, but since you finished up with aging and since the uh, individual who has inspired the Zoom, uh, Aaron Fleck, is uh, about to turn 101 in January, you did some testing with him. Well, let me, let me tell a quick story. The first time you met him, I had told you on several occasions what a remarkable person he was. And you kind of said, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, he's 100. He can walk. And that's great. And then we had dinner together. And five minutes into the dinner, you leaned over and whispered into my ear, I must see his DNA. Um, so in effect, you did. And Tell us, tell us what kind of analysis you did and, and what you learned about Aaron Fleck. Yeah, so, yeah, first of all, you know, Aaron is a very special individual, and, and we all know that. And one thing that we did here is we, we have a test. We have developed a test here in Vail that we will bring with us in Aspen. It's, you know, we have learned, we have studied, and we just came back from San Francisco, you know, yesterday we spent the day there with the the UCSF crew and, and the Buck Institute. So we develop a test because we, we know now that when you age, you accumulate cells in your body that are not good for you. People call them zombie cells. We call them, you know, senescent cells. Those cells are very bad for you because they stop dividing. Those cells do not become cancer cells, but those cells, you know, trigger inflammation they release a lot of inflammatory mediators. And we now know that all aging related disease, including Alzheimer, Parkinson, um, cancer, you know, osteoarthritis, it's all inflammation driven. So now, you know, we know that, but we develop a test and, and I can take all of you today, take, you know, uh, you know uh, some of your blood and within three hours tell you how many bad cells you have in your body. And we now know that when you age, you have more senescent cells in your body than when you're young. So we know that. But, you know, to come back to iron, so we did some tests on him and the number of senescent cells he had in his body is very low. So, you know, that is probably one of the reasons why he is so sharp and, you know, it's over 100 years of age. But, you know, the reason why he has so little, you know, bad cells in his body is still unclear to us. I, I, I suspect, you know, that, you know, nutrition and, you know, exercise is very important for that. We always say that people that, you know, we're trying to find drug to delay aging, to make you age healthier. But if you don't work with us, it's not going to work. So the first thing I tell people is if you eat right, if you have a good diet and you have a good exercise regimen, this is 50% of the game. So I think that Aaron has been very disciplined probably with his nutrition or something and but, you know, we're going to do more tests on Aaron because, you know, this is just the beginning. But he's a very unique individual, if I can tell you that. Um, well, I, I tell you, another way he's unique is that the, uh, as we joke with him, the vitamin that he takes the most, he calls vitamin I, which stands for ice cream. Uh, so we all should be eating more chocolate and double chocolate and chocolate chip, I guess, because... Uh, that's, that's what keeps him young, apparently. Yeah. 
you know, this is very interesting, Greg, that you, you mentioned that because um, I told you that those bad cells accumulate in our body, okay? And I told you that the older we get, more senescent cells or more bad cells we have in our body. And why it's so key for us? Because we have treatment here that we have developed here at the Stenman Clinic and Stenman Philippon Research Institute where I can give you a natural supplement and that will kill specifically those senescent cells and reduce them. So, but again, I mean, when I tell you that when we age, we accumulate senescent cells, I tested some people here and Iron is one of them that the number of senescent cells they have in their body equals someone of around 50 years of age. And I don't understand why, you know, I have some people working in my lab here, they are 25, 30, but sometimes their senescent cells are higher than someone that is double their age. So this is why, you know, we're doing some work with the Food and Drug Administration right now, because we would like this test to become a test, like, you know, prostate cancer now doesn't kill anybody. And it's not because we have a treatment for cancer, it's because we have a biomarker called PSA, prostate serum albumin, that everybody goes through, get tested. And if your PSA in your blood rise, then we know there is something, you know, happening. It's either one, prostate inflammation or two, prostate cancer. So this biomarker PSA save lives now. I believe that the senescent cells marker that we have developed that we can test here will be the best biomarker for healthy aging. And we would like the FDA to approve a treatment that everybody over 40 or 45 years of age should be tested. And if you, your senescent cells increase in your blood, then there is something happening. It's maybe you get an, uh, you know, uh, you went skiing and you fell and you damaged your ACL or there is something happening. But, but clearly, you know, those cells, when they arise, we know that there is something brewing in your body somewhere. We don't know where. And this is why, you know, when you have a higher level of senescent cell, we do more tests. We do more uh, molecular tests, we do more, you know, cancer screen, uh, and, and this is why, you know, it is a very important test to be done now. Is this research unique to you and to the Stephen Philippon Research Institute? Well, I think, you know, this is an interesting thing because senescent cells, you know, um, this is a new field emerging in, in science. Everybody have heard about stem cells, right? I mean, stem cells has been growing for the last 30 years, but Senescent cells is new. What makes us unique though is, you know, it's funny because we're here in the valley and, and sometimes we cannot do animal experiment here. We cannot do mice and rat and rabbit experiment because we have to do it in Fort Collins at Colorado State University. So me, without being able to test this in mice, so I decided to, to start to take the blood of human patients and test their number of senescent cells and you know, gave them fisetin to reduce the number of senescent cells as well. And, and it's funny because the NIH, the National Institute of Health recently gave $50 million, put $50 million in a bucket and said, you know, all the people that work on senescent cells should apply for that money because we want to know more about that. So I was on a conference call and everybody around the country work on mice, rat and rabbit, but me, I had over 250 patients already tested, you know, uh, here. And because of that, then, you know, it put us, you know, 250 patients ahead of, my, of the competition of the people working on this field. And why we have been able to do this is I attribute this to two reasons. One, we were not able to do any more research, so we jumped directly, you know, in, in patients to test our senescent cells. But two, you know, we get some philanthropic gift. You know, we have been very grateful to have donors that come here, get their surgery, gave back. And because of that money, allow us to, to go ahead, to become ahead of the, uh, uh, of the science field and to position ourselves to be, yes, we're one of the first team in the country to be able to test this in human by using a test that is reproducible and is being FDA approved as we speak. So how far ahead do you think it will be before we, we actually uh, have some information that enables us to uh, achieve uh, longevity through a, either an, uh, some kind of medicine or some sort of pill, or is it just a diet change uh, where we can say, take some positive action to actually extend our life? Yeah. That uh, actually, this is very interesting because that's what I want to build in Aspen. I think the good thing about, you know, Aspen and Vail is we're in very high altitude. And two, you know, people are very active in general. 
So we already put plan together. Now I have people that came to see me, you know, and what we do, we test their senescent cells. And after this, we put them on the natural supplement to reduce senescent cells. And after this, we, we ask them what they want to do next. You know, that's always depend on you, how much, how involved you want to be. We can bank your stem cells. For example, my stem cell was banked five years ago. So that means that my stem cells are five years younger than me, you know, as we speak today. So maybe down the road, you know, I go and ski in Aspen, I damage my ECL, then maybe my stem cell will be there to help me recover faster. But the nutrition and exercise, this is something that we're trying to put together, a comprehensive, you know, program where we will monitor, you know, what you eat. We will monitor how much exercise you do. Uh, sleeping, by the way, guys, I, I want to tell you, sleeping is one of the factor number one of aging. When we get older, we don't sleep as well. We all get, you know, uh, wake up in the middle of the night, we're anxious and everything. Take sleeping pills because I'm telling you, sleeping is very important for healthy aging. Another thing important for healthy aging is, you know, when you eat your dinner at six o'clock at night or at seven o'clock at night, don't try to have your breakfast, you know, 14 hours later the day after. So in other words, if you have your, uh, your dinner at six, seven o'clock at night, the day after you cannot have your breakfast before 10. And if you can do this fasting period, it's very important. It's very, very, you know, efficient right now. So yeah, we're putting a program together with artificial intelligence. I would like to build this in Vail because in Aspen, sorry, because that will be very unique to you guys. So we can connect all the dots. I can look at your biomarkers. I can look at your genes. I can look at your nutrition exercise. And after this, I can put this through an artificial intelligence to look at markers and everything. Not only I can help you to age fast, uh, to age healthier and better, but I can maybe be able to predict disease. Think about it now. If I was doing this, because when you get cancer, I, I'm sure you know, someone who get cancer sometime, the doctor will tell you that this cancer was growing in you 20 years ago. It was just starting, you know, and when you find that tumor, this is almost, you know, like 20 years later. So the goal of this program is not only to make you age healthier, but it's also to predict disease before they hit you. Let's say that, you know, for you, uh, Greg, you know, I can tell you, maybe for you, you have to watch out for a cardiovascular disease or, you know, but your, your spouse can be more for neurodegeneration. And what if we put a program today that tried to prevent this to happen in the first place? This is what we call, you know, proactive, you know, uh, medicine in a way, because we're trying to predict before it hits you. And another thing I want to add here is, Yes, you have heard about stem cells around the country. You have heard about regenerative medicine, but what we're doing it here, I, I, we're doing it right because you know a lot of those treatments are novel and new, and because they are novel and new, then you know we cannot predict if it's going to work or not. So now you know we have five you know uh, FDA Food and Drug Administration approved clinical trials, funded by federally funded by either the Department of Defense and the NIH. And what we do here, if you fall on those trials, you may get the real you know, drugs or the drugs that we're trying to test, or you may get the placebo. This is why we don't include our friend in those trials because we don't want our friend to fall in the placebo group because everybody told me, doctor, can you make sure I don't fall in the placebo group? And because of that, I cannot tell you because we're doing the trials for that. But at the completion of those trials, if I can really see that the drug works better than the placebo, then this is what I can offer to those patients and say, well, this is an evidence-based treatment. And a lot of people doing stem cells around the country, sometimes they cut corner. They try to get to the patient right away and they don't do those clinical trials. And because they don't do it, then, you know, um, then this is the reason why you know, they cannot say it's gonna work or not because they have not done the placebo double blind studies that's gonna prove it for, you know, for sure. How much time in the future, how far away are we from having these breakthroughs, do you think? Well, I, I'm a scientist and you know, I, you know, I have to tell you that uh, 30 years ago when I started you know, uh, my graduate school, you know, I found something in the research. I was a, you know, a young, you know, 29 year old, you know, a scientist. And I went to see my, my mentor and I said, you know, if I, I said, if I discover, you know, a treatment for muscular dystrophy, do you think I have to do my extra two years to graduate my program? And he told me, he said, if you find a cure for muscular dystrophy, you're set up for life. 
So I'm, I, why I'm telling you this is because I'm a very enthusiastic person. I mean, if you have to live in a science world, you have to be enthusiastic about what you do. I mean, this is really something that is very important. I can tell you to answer your question directly, they have things we can do today. They have things that we can do, you know, already now. I mean, I can already test your senescent cells. I can already test markers that I know are involved in, in aging. I can already test markers that I know are cancer related. I can already test, you know, biomarker for Alzheimer, for example. We can start there. And as we, as we get more research in the lab, you know, done and completed, then we can add on to those treatments that we can offer. But I would say that, you know, uh, everybody nowadays as a personal trainer for, you know, when you go to work out, you know, you get someone to help you to train, to not damage your back and to don't pull a muscle. I think in the near future, as I'm saying within the next five years, we're going to become your personal trainer for healthy aging. Mm -hmm. We're going to access all your data. We're going to get all the tests done and we're going to do everything. And especially we're going to talk to your doctor because all your doctor that you have, your personal doctor knows your, the treatment that you had in the past, they know the medication you're taking. So this is all very important. So what we would like to do is to put this all together and after this make recommendation to you. So we will become your personal trainer for healthy aging. And that is really something that, you know, we, have already, we always have assumed that aging is normal, but aging is not normal. And we always assume that, you know, well, my father age, I'm aging, my son is aging. There is nothing I can do about this. This is wrong too. I mean, now we're finding that aging is abnormal and we're finding why we are aging and we're trying to develop drug to delay that. Again, the goal is not to bring you to 25 years of age. The goal is to make you age healthier and better. My goal here is you die as long, that you die healthy as long as possible. My goal is you die the day after you went skiing, the day after you went biking, the, way, the day after you went, you know, running. Healthy aging is really the goal here. And, and, and that's really, you know, what we are trying to achieve here. Well, uh, I would like to open up the uh, gallery here for questions with, with that. Uh, and I've had a little technology uh, difficulty at my end, and I'm not sure I can see everyone. So I invite you to just uh, kind of jump in and uh, introduce yourself if you have a question for Dr. Heward, because I may not see you uh, if you're waving your hand. So would anyone, is there anyone out there that has a question? Yes, go ahead, Andrea. And make sure your audio is on. In the lower left, you'll see mute. Uh, and you want to unmute? Do you, do you, we're not hearing you. Do you see lower uh, in the lower left, there's a little icon that says mute on the far outside lower left? Okay. We, your computer doesn't have healthy aging. Um, <laughs> So we'll work on that. Not everybody has the uh, that icon in the same place. It depends on your hardware and your software. Okay. Well, Andy's if back. she can unmute. If uh, if Pam, you're on an iPad, it's on the top. Pam, can you unmute Andrea, please? And does anyone else have a question? Elliot Leva just raised his hand. Elliot. Oh, the host had to unmute me. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes. yes, we can. Go ahead, Andrew. That's what happened. Uh, you mentioned earlier, I mean, I mean, it's fascinating about the anti-aging stuff, but you mentioned earlier about banking stem cells when you're younger. And my understanding, and I've been researching this for a couple of years because I've got arthritis, shoulders all over right now. My wrist is the new place. Um, so in my reading, the FDA was not approving expanding stem cells or manipulating them in any way. And the idea of banking stem cells suggests that there is some type of manipulation with them in the process of storing, or is that so? Yeah, well, that's a very good question. I mean, you know, um, Scientists, you know, I've been doing stem cells research for 30 years. So the bottom line for me is I was not 
thinking about stem cell banking you know, when I started this. I was trying to understand stem cells. Let me give you an example here. If you have leukemia, if someone has leukemia, one of the treatments that they do to you, they do a full body radiation. They basically you know, kill all your bone marrow stem cells. They harvest some stem cells before the treatment. And after this, they reinfuse your own stem cell to rebuild your bone marrow, right? So in those treatments, you know, do you know how many stem cells they inject to you? No. Just give me an example, well, you know, a, a number. Well, what do you think, you know, uh, are we talking about 50 million, 25 million, you know, or? A billion. 50 billion. billion. So the number of uh, hematopoietic stem cells they inject in you is 500. And you can look on, on the web, you can look, you know, this is only 500 stem cells if we inject this in your bloodstream, can you rebuild all your bone marrow? So the question that has been with stem cell banking and you touch upon a very good point is, people think that you need to grow 150 millions of your own stem cells. It turns out that we call them stem cells for a reason. And the reason is you don't need 150 million to do the job if they are so good. So now we're doing some work where, you know, and we're talking to the FDA that the stem cell banking, what I will do is, I we will go in, if you go for an ECL reconstruction or uh, bone repair, we will go in and take some fat or take some bone marrow from your iliac crest. I will isolate the cells. I will not expand them and I'm gonna freeze them right away. And I think you're not gonna have, you know, 150 millions in your bank, but you're gonna have maybe, you know, uh, 50,000. But the bottom line is those 50,000 will be the good one will be the one that you need, you know, uh, to improve your healing process, will be the one that you need to delay aging. And on the top of that, it will be the one that's going to be FDA approved because the big problem with the Food and Drug Administration is we all know that when you grow cells, you grow millions of them, you create more problem than benefit in your stem cell bank because the bottom line is when you grow them, some of them can become cancer cells. Some of them can become those zombie cells that I told you about. So clearly we are planning to do a stem cell banking. Yes, that's going to be starting. My hope is to tar, start this, you know, in Aspen, where we're going to bank your stem cells. They are not going to be expended. No, you're not going to have 150 million dollars, 50 million stem cells in your bank. And but you're going to have the best one. You're going to have, uh, you know, maybe 50,000. That's going to. That's what you need. The problem is. People that are stem cell banking, you know, CEO and so forth, they are not biologists. They don't know. They think that you have to grow, you know, 150 million cells and you don't need to. And that's why, you know, we are involving the FDA. You know, the FDA is, is working with us with all the clinical trials we're doing. We're following the rule of the FDA because I don't want to have patients from Aspen have to go to Mexico or Germany to be injected. I would like to do it right there in Aspen under the FDA, FDA guidelines and to try to uh, make sure that everything is safe for you first and also can give you a benefit for your treatment. You're giving a whole new name to investment banking. Uh, <laughs> the, uh, did you have a follow-up, Andrea? Um, well, yeah, well, actually that did answer the question about the safety of it because I, ha I had also read that the, it was problematic to expand cells. So I didn't know if banking the cells also included the expansion of them. So that was helpful. So then, yeah, I guess I have a question. Does it, what's my understanding and correct me if I'm wrong is, well, you can get it from adipose tissue or the bone marrow. Um, it, why use one or the other, or do you use both? That's a very good question too. I mean, you know, <laughs> um, because I think I want to say that, you know, I have orthopedic surgeon here that I've used bone marrow stem cells for the last 20 years. It's very difficult for them to change what they have been doing for 20 years. So clearly, you know, yes, we can drill a hole in your iliac crest and get stem cell from your bone marrow and re-inject to you, you know, and we know that it works. We know that but now we know that fat, what I went through is, you know, um, I went through a, a, a liposuction that they call. So they basically harvest some fat from my belly area and, and you know, they can get, you know, a very good stem cell there too. And everybody wants to give their fat away. So I think it's more convincing to the patient to say, hey, how about if we harvest some fat instead of drilling a hole in your iliac crest? 
so yes, they have they have a lot. I've been trained in stem cells all my life, and I was getting them from the skeletal muscle. Just to tell you, we have stem cells from different organs, but the fat seems to be a good area to get them because it's easy, it's non-invasive. The problem is everybody that do a depose of stem cells or fat stem cells, you know, they are expanding them and they grow 150 millions of them and they inject 150 millions to their patient. And I don't think that's right. And, but you know, the location to harvest the stem cells, I would say that the adipose derived stem cell from the fat is a very attractive area to harvest the stem cells. Um, Aaron is up there calculating what it'll cost to start a series of franchise businesses called mm -hmm. liposuction and longevity. Uh, the, uh, Elliot, you have a, uh, Dr. Levy, you have a question? Yeah, I wrote it in, but I'll be happy to um, state it. Can you hear me? Yes. yes okay. Correct. There's a lot of people around many different cities that claim to uh, use stem cells to make you feel better, to heal your broken parts of your body, to make you look younger. And how do you know who has good credentials, who knows what to do, and what are the consequences if you make a mistake and choose a bad person and get stem cells from someone who doesn't know what they're doing? Uh, that, that's a very good question too. And this is why, you know, I told you that what we do is we do personalized medicine. So what I do, the first thing start, we take some blood from you. We're looking at your bad cells that I told you, the senescent cells or zombie cells that are very bad for you. So we're looking at this, but we're looking at a lot of biomarkers because all of us has been exposed to toxicity in our life. All of us, you know, may, uh, we have been born and we, uh, you know, we have genes from our parents that, predispose us to, you know, cholesterol or, you know, Alzheimer. And, you know, just to tell you the truth, I'm, a, I'm running five miles a day. I'm 55 years of age, but my, col my cholesterol is through the roof. And no matter what I do, no matter what I do, you know, exercise, nutrition, my cholesterol is always high. So for me, you know, I, I need, you know, Repata, or I need the new drug to reduce cholesterol. So I just tell you that the first thing we do, we do a full blood work on you. And, and through that full blood work, you know, I can probably, you know, predict the people that will be more, you know, uh, that will get a big benefit from stem cells. And I can tell you that the people that will not get a, a good benefit from stem cells. For example, you know, if I test your blood and you have a lot of bad cells in your body, okay, you have a lot of those senescent cells that I talked to about in the beginning, those senescent cells there, you know, they can offset any benefit of the stem cells you have. So the first thing I will do is to reduce your senescent cells. That's the first thing. And, you know, and after this, I may harvest stem cells, you know, and after this, I may re-inject stem cells. And other thing I want to make clear is you should be worried when someone tell you that stem cell can cure everything under the sun, that stem cell can be used for everything. And, and, and you know, I, I even heard, you know, recently that, you know, stem cell can be very good for COVID, for everything that we go through life. You should be careful with this because, you know, I can tell you, you know, I've been doing stem cell for 30 years and, and, and I know, you know, the way I see this and I'm going to explain it to you. Let's say if you are a 60 year old and you have your bone on bone or you're starting to, you have osteoarthritis, you're going to need a knee or a hip replacement. My goal here is to go in to inject stem cells, to try to delay aging so I can, I can push, you know, the joint replacement from 60 year old to 70 year old. So like this, when you get your knee in your hip, that's gonna be the last hip or the last knee you're gonna have because they're gonna last 15 or 20 years. So that's my goal I have. My, is my goal to cure cancer? Of course I would like to cure cancer. Is my goal you know, to try to cure you know, Alzheimer? Of course I want to, but my goal is to try to delay it. And, and, and how I can delay it? Then I can remove the bad cells in your body. Then I can probably you know, give you a good nutrition and exercise. I can also maybe inject stem cells, but I will never tell you, you know, stem cell will cure you from cancer. I will tell you that stem cells may delay the process of Alzheimer. And at the end of the day, you know, this is what we want. And, and this is why I talk in the beginning about the fact that what I'm very excited about right now is using artificial intelligence to take all your data, pulling this together and predict disease. I really would like to be able to predict disease before they hit you. Can you believe if I can predict cancer 10 years before it hit you? 
can you believe how successful I can be to try to treat you? Then instead of detecting the cancer, when you see you know, an oncologist and he tell you you have a stage four lung cancer, then we have no chance. So I think a lot of people are trying to find treatment to cure cancer and I applaud them. And I think that I'm still working on treatment for muscular dystrophy, for example, in other disease, incurable disease. But what I believe is, you know, if I can delay the disease process, if I can keep you healthier longer, uh, if I can delay the joint replacement as long as possible. So when you get your knee in your hip, that's going to be the last one you're going to have in your life. And, and that's a big deal. And that is really what we're after because um, this thing I think we can achieve. And my goal, and people tell me all the time, and I know this question is gonna happen here today too, is am I too old for that? And I tell people that you all, you know, one year, uh, two years and five years younger uh, today than one, two and five years from now. So clearly it's never too late really, but the, full, the, the first thing is to do personalized medicine to look at all the biomarkers and the one thing I want to say also is when I have all this information, okay, put in my bank that I'm going to have with your name on it and a code, let's say you're traveling to Boston. Let's say you're having a cardiac, you know, um, arrest out there. They have to do cardiac surgery on you. So what are they going to do? You're going to arrive there by ambulance. They don't know you. They have to do surgery on you. So what I would like to do is to be able to send all this information to Boston and tell them, be careful with this patient. Because, you know, maybe the anesthesia, you know, go, go light on the anesthesia, maybe do this and that. Because, you know, I have all your biomarkers in my bank. That's really something that I really believe is going to save lives down the road. And again, maybe this is not as sexy as curing disease, but delaying disease, it's a big deal. Richard Horash. Um, just uh, some practical questions. Uh, number one, what is the cost to maintain bank cells for an extended period of time. Number two, um, should we be collecting stem cells at the time of birth? So the question, you know, the cost of it. I mean, if you go to any stem cell banking right now, you know, that costs some time, you know, uh, to harvest, you know, and bank your stem cells is between, you know, uh, 15 to $20,000. But the problem I can tell you that all the cost is associated with the expansion. Because, you know, they have to take the, take the fat, harvest the stem cells, and take three weeks to grow 150 million cells. So I think that with my, the, the way we're going after this, you know, it's going to be affordable for a lot of people because I really believe that it will be within the $5,000 range where, you know, you're going to be sleeping out there, we'll repair your ECL, and me, I go in with a syringe, I go and get some fat from you, and when you, you come back to see your doctor two weeks later about your ACL reconstruction, you know, how good you have done two weeks post, you know, treatment, then I'm going to give you a code and I'm going to see your stem cells are bank and here's the cost. So by cutting the expansion, I'm going to cut significantly the cost of stem cell banking. And the second question that you ask is, you know, you know should we do this, you know, from our, for our newborn and thing? This is the best gift you can give to any anybody out there. I mean, you know, I, I, at birth, it's sad because, you know, when you have a baby boy or a baby girl, you know, people buy, you know, data bear, they buy outfit, they buy thing. The best thing will be to bang their stem cell because, you know, you have the umbilical cord there that you have to, you have a lot of stem cells there that may be good not only for the baby, but think about it, maybe good for the mother as well. Because this umbilical cord is, is a mixture of the baby and the mother. So maybe harvesting the cells there, banking them at birth will be the best gift you, you, you can give to a patient. But, but for us, it's a little bit too late for that. But I really believe that, you know, for the new generation to come, I really believe that the stem cell banking will become part of any, like you get all the vaccination, right? At birth, they give you a lot of vaccination, you know, for polio and all sort of thing. Then I think the stem cell banking will be part of the treatment as well, because that's going to be, that's going to save life. I guarantee you uh, that it will. Thank you. Um, George, did you, do you have a question? Yeah, I do. Uh, you mentioned earlier uh, that sleeping is really important and I'm 78 and I'm having trouble now, but I had trouble when I was 28. But uh, what about these sleeping pills? You say it's good to take sleeping pills. Ambien, there's a lot of controversy. Uh, do you have anything you recommend? Or 
Well, I think that's a very good point. Actually, you know, I just came back from the Buck Institute in San Francisco and the CEO of this institute, this is the best institute for aging in the world, guys. I have to tell you, they have like probably 100 doctors like me working on aging there. The CEO of the institute told me that the number one factor for aging is sleeping. Mm. So that just tells you a lot because they analyze pretty much everything out there. Yeah, the sleeping pill, you know, clearly you don't want to create a dependence on them. You know, uh, melatonin, you know, natural supplement is really the way I go about it. You know, um, I'm not a good sleeper either. I'm 55 and I'm very nervous. You know, I have a lot of things in my mind sometimes. You know, I go to bed and I turn around all night. So I often think melatonin, you know, and thing more natural. So I can send you, I made a list, guys, you know, that I will be more than happy to send to you a list of healthy aging medication. Some of those, you know, aging medication are natural supplement to sleep better. Some of them is to eliminate those bad cells that I told you in your body. Some of them is, you know, to, uh, to keep your stem cells, you know, healthier from now on. I have a list, you know, of supplement that I've been sharing. And what I'm gonna send you, I can send it to Greg and he can share with you, is I can tell you, you know, the science behind and the dosing you need to take and, 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 and the rationale of using it, you know, you know, you're doing this because you do this with those pills, you do that. And, and a lot of them are not even pills, like I said, they are natural supplement that, you know, are, are from plant derivatives that, you know, have been shown to be very efficient to do this or that. So clearly, you know, for the sleeping pill, yes, I will stay away from those pills that you create an habit from it and go more toward, you know, the natural supplement that sometimes, you know, are have less side effect, but, you know, uh, are better for you. Thank you. That's a terrific answer. Um, yes, Adam. Uh, thank you. Uh, I want to ask uh, the doctor uh, advice or knowledge. There is um, an institution, Stem Cell Institute in Panama. It belonged to a doctor from Texas by the name of Neil uh, Reardon. And what they do over there, which is not allowed here uh, by the FDA, they taking embryonic stem cells, um, probably tens of millions, and they injecting it through intravenous uh, into the blood, um, and it's supposed to be curing anti-aging, uh, wear and tear, and specific uh, illnesses. I just wonder if you know anything about the procedure. Uh, do you know about Neil Reardon, and what do you think about it? Well, this is, wow. You know, the, the questions are very good. I have to say that I do this type of, you know, uh, Zoom call sometime and I have very little questions. So the questions are very profound here. Let me tell you the reason number one. I don't know this person personally, but I know a lot of people that work on embryonic stem cells in the country. So the bottom line with embryonic stem cell, the problem number one is the cell that they're going to inject to you are never going to be yours. Me, what I do is all the stem cell therapy that we do is autologous. I take cells from you and re-inject them back to you. And why we do this is because we don't want you to reject the stem cell that we are injecting. So the problem number one with the embryonic stem cells, of course, they're taking, you know, embryos, you know, discarded embryos, and that's not going to be you for sure. So clearly that's the problem number one, the immune rejection. The problem number two is those embryonic stem cells. You know that, you know, at consumptions, you know, we have two cells coming together, you know, like a hex and a sperms, you know, and after this, from that two cells, we create, you know, a, a multi-billion, you know, cells, you know, uh, organism, right? Those two cells that come together that they make those embryonic stem cells, they are very powerful because they can become a cardiac cells, they can become a bone cells, they can become, you know, a, a nerve cells. The problem is they can also become a cancer cells. And another thing that is very, you know, uh, we need to be very careful with, you know, embryonic stem cells is they don't tell you this often, but what they do very well is teratomas. They are making cancer cells. Mm -hmm. So you don't want to be injected with cells that has the potential to become cancer. Yes, we all want to live healthier and better, but, you know, getting new stem cells, you know, uh, that are maybe, you know, may become cancer cells is not good. And the third thing, is the location. You're talking about Panama. You know, when someone tell me something like this, I'm always asking the question, you have the best mind in the country, in the USA. I mean, you know, you have the best mind in Harvard, UCSF, everybody around the country working on it. 
why do you have to go in Panama to set up a stem cell banking? I want to do it in Aspen, guys, because I want to follow the rule from the FDA. The Food and Drug Administration people will tell you they are very stringent. Yes, they are stringent. But the bottom line is they want us to do it right. They want us to make sure that we're not going to harm the patient that we're treating. And that's why, you know, you know, listen, I'm doing five clinical trials with new drugs and supplement here, you know, in Vail, Colorado, in the middle of nowhere here. You know, I'm not associated with a big Harvard and, and Stanford or, uh, you know, whatever. But why am I doing it? It's because I follow the rules of the FDA. They, I ask them, can you help me to help those people here? They want stem cells injection. I know as a stem cell biologist, I can help them. Can you help me? And the FDA are coming here. They're going to help me to make it that's going to be safe for you, that's going to be affordable, and that's going to be make sure that, you know, I'm not going to inflict any disease in you. And, and that is really where we're going about. So when you hear about embryonic stem cells, it, was, it has a lot of hype behind, and people will tell you we can cure every disease under the sun. You need to be careful. And I have to tell you that I met some people here, you know, in, a, you know, in this valley area here, that had stem cells injected, you know, in their own face for wrinkles and things like this. And they were all swollen. And, and I said to them, I said, can you give me the name of the doctor? And the doctor was in Mexico. So basically, I, I basically called them and said, I'm not a scientist. You know, I'm a, my relative, I'm a relative to this person. And I would like to know which stem cells they have injected. And sometimes they tell me that they pull like stem cells from young individuals, you know, out there, they combine this all together, they inject this in your face. So that's really the problem. So I want to do it in Aspen and in Vail, following the FDA guideline. And I want to make sure, it may take a little bit longer. You know, I may say that, you know, we're maybe, you know, one or two years away to really being able to bank all your stem cell guys in Aspen all together, you know, all at the same time. But, but right now is I need to follow the FDA guideline. I need to make sure that what I'm doing is right, is affordable, and I'm not as safe for you. That's really my goal here. Is coming to Aspen is going to accelerate this and uh, make you more successful at the same time? Yeah, well, I mean, going to Aspen, uh, I, I'm going to be honest with you, I love Aspen. I mean, you know, you may say, well, you live in Vail and you love Aspen, right? I'm Canadian. <laughs> so for me, but I love Aspen because Aspen has a something very unique about Aspen. It's kind of, you know, older and, you know, it's kind of more, you know, um, history behind Aspen. But, but what I want to do is, you know, I don't want to build the same thing that I have in Vail. You know, I have a labor, I, we have, we're going to have three laboratories. I have one in Fort Collins where I do all animal research. I do all the mice, rat and rabbit study. I do this in Fort Collins. The lab that I'm doing is in Vail here. I'm not doing any more research, but I'm doing a lot of studies in cultural dishes and trying to test, you know, drugs and things like this here. What I want to do in Aspen is all clinical. I want to make an Aspen, a, an AI, artificial intelligence lab, where there's going to be a lab that you go in that's going to be mainly computers, and I'm going to start to collect your information. And I want the Aspen to be the hub for this. I would like the people to come around the country, to come to Aspen, to have their, their healthy aging personalized medicine treatment to be done. And everything will be stores and computers. And, and, and that's really my, I don't want to repeat exactly the same thing I have here in Vail because it's gonna become boring for me. I want to build something that I can call Aspen, you know, being the hub. And one thing I want to say also is, Greg, you know that we organize the Vail Scientific Summit every year. And the Vail Scientific Summit, I'm bringing the best mine in the country, 50 or 60 top professor in the country. And we have been, we organized our sixth annual Vail Scientific Summit this year here in Vail, where the knowledge being shared, people coming from Harvard, MIT, Stanford, uh, California, I mean, every big institution, Cleveland Clinic, they're all coming here. So it turns out that next year, I want to organize it in Aspen. I would like to have the first, you know, regenerative medicine, you know, uh, scientific you know meeting in aspen where all of you can be invited and trust me the people that are coming to those meetings they are true scientists they're going to teach you you know um, 
the way to do it. And I want this to become, I want to alternate. One ear can be Vail, the other ear can be Aspen. Because what I want to do in Aspen is really artificial intelligence behind stem cell banking, behind LT aging. And, and I think there, you know, I'm going to try to bring mine around the country that are very good at doing this. So that's really my goal. And, and, and for me, guys, I like to be, uh, you know, in Aspen and enjoying the skiing during the winter too. And, you know, I come to Vail. So I really would like to be able to enjoy, you know, both location because, you know, both location has a lot of things to offer. And I really believe, but I don't want to make something that's going to be a Vail the Vail satellite lab or something like this. I want this thing to be the Aspen lab where we do this and we're not doing this in Vail. We're going to start to do this in Aspen as day one. And that's going to be kind of the crown jewel for this program in Aspen. You're the only Vail I'd have ever heard say they like Aspen. <laughs> you um, to, uh, you can, if I have to say that the first time you invite me in Aspen, I had a, a beer with you and Aaron Fleck to that small restaurant. Do you remember that? Yes. That was really where I come from. I mean, I come from, from a small village. You saw from the video, this is all small, you know, but this is whole, you know, uh, building and, you know, you're going to take a, you know, a beer to a place that, you know, they haven't changed the interior of this bar for 30 years. I kind of like that. I kind of, a modern thing is good, but having the history behind, you know, a building. And I see a lot of this in Aspen and, and the people in Aspen is also different too, because I know that everybody on the phone here today, you know, you, you're very proud of living out there, but you really want to do something new and novel. I can tell you guys what I'm doing. Maybe it's going to tell me more time. But I guarantee you, you're going to pr be proud of this down the road because it's going to be done right. I'm not cutting corner here. I'm doing it right with the FDA guideline. I'm going to bring federal funding in Aspen. You know, already, you know, the federal funding, we just got one million. We'll go to uh, Basalt, you know, and Aspen to do some treatment there. I have Dustin Anderson that work at the Aspen Hospital there. He's a uh, biologics guy. He do uh, platelet-rich plasma, bone marrow aspirate. I know he's on the Zoom call here. I've been talking to him. I already want, I don't want to do only work in Basalt and Willet because I learned that sometimes people from Aspen, they don't want to go farther than the runabout on outside of Aspen. <laughs> so I'm going to make sure to make it easy for you guys. I'm going to make something that if you don't want to come to Basalt or Willet, we're going to do it in Aspen directly there. Well, in July, trying to get into town is an act of uh, unhealthy aging. Um, so we, we look forward to you. Go ahead, Steve. You have a question? Aaron, uh, did you talk to Johnny about Richard Stedman's visit here 30 years ago? Does he know that history? I would like you're, to you're on mute. I would like to hear that. It only took us 25 years to, for you and I, we started not. 1995 to get the Vail people to come over here. They wanted to come, but some of the people on, on the Aspen board didn't want them. And we won't go into the reasons. But now that they're here, we are so grateful. And we are looking forward to the clinics and what they are going to do, not only for the people of Aspen, but for the world. There are other projects that I wish uh, uh, Johnny would talk about some of his other researches on muscle regeneration and everything else. There are at least seven projects that I know that are so beneficial to mankind. So I wish he'd spend a few minutes more talking about some of those. Yeah. Well, first of all, I mean, you know, um, I'm aware that they have an history behind and the people from Vail should, you know, was supposed to be a lot earlier than that. Okay. So, okay. so now, so, so now, you know, I think, you know, we're going to change this. And as you know, you know, uh, we have a lot of people from Vail that's going to come to Aspen and Basel to, to do surgery. So I'm going to come along. Let me tell you just something. We have a lot of projects in the lab, so this is impossible for me. Just to give you an idea, you know, we have seven 
National Institute of Health grant right here. We have three large Department of Defense. Then, you know, but one thing I think will be very interesting for you in Aspen is we recently found that when you have football players who get concussion, you know, I, I'm sure you have heard about concussion. This is an epidemic in, in the sport. And, and right now is we don't have any way to diagnose it and we don't have any way to treat it. The only way we do, you know, with concussion, we built helmet ticker. That's really what we have done. It turns out that, you know, I, I've been working with the NFL. It turns out that when they get a concussion, the number of bad cells that I told you about, those senescent cells, accumulate in their blood. So now, you know, we're starting a program that we're going to do with the NFL, and I would like to do this in Aspen because I think you have a brain institute there, or you have a group that look at the brain there. I really would like to set up something, not only when you have a concussion, we can test and really make sure that you have a concussion because those senescent cells will rise in your blood, but two, when you recover. Because the bottom line right now is, I don't know if you know, I was working with the Pittsburgh Penguins, and, and you know, one of our star players, you know, got hit, you know, the board with his helmet on and he came to the bench and we said, well, you're not allowed to go back on the ice. We have to do a test on you. And we asked him, you know, memory, can you tell us, you know, the month of the year we are in or the day of the, of the week we are in and, you know, what is your birthday? You know, the biggest problem we had, he didn't speak English. <laughs> and this guy wanted to go back to the game because he said, I want to go to the ice. I want to go to score the goal. So this is, you know, really something that can be unique if we can develop a treatment that we can di diagnose concussion, but also when we treat you for concussion, would that be nice if we can tell you now you're ready to go back to the game? Because a lot of players, they go back, they still have the side effect. And I'm sure that you know that all those people who die from concussion, you know, they do, you know, uh, autopsy on them. Some of them, you know, have a lot of problem in their brain. So that can be something that we can really tie you know, with Aspen that we cannot really do here in Vail because we don't do a lot of neuro, you know, brain trauma here. And I would like to set up something that you don't have to go somewhere else. We can keep you in Aspen and test you for this right there. Are there other questions? Because uh, we go, go ahead, Andrew. Um, thank you, doctor. This has been wonderful. Um, you mentioned uh, in response to one of the previous questions that um, you're a big fan of using one's own cells as opposed to going down to Panama or Costa Rica, which I've looked into myself, which now I'm quite discouraged from doing from based on what you say. Um, you, you also mentioned that taking, you know, stem cells at birth is best. At what age do your, ste your stem cells, for all intents and purposes, are no longer effective? Meaning, obviously, if you're 25, harvesting cells and storing them is wonderful. At 50, 75, what age is it kind of like you missed the boat? So uh, this is a very good question too. And I don't think there is a age. You know, one thing that we're developing a program here is we're doing personalized medicine. I'm gonna look at all, the first thing that you will do, I will look at all your biomarkers. And based on that, I may put you on some treatment before we harvest your stem cells. The idea will be that I'm gonna do two things here. Let's say if you're 85 and the number of stem cells you have, you know, we can monitor that, you know, is not very high. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, put you in some treatment to, you know, enhance your stem cells in your body, to eliminate the bad cells in your body. And maybe a month later, we're gonna harvest your stem cells. So that's one approach. I think, I don't think there is anybody too old for this because you know what, when I look at the blood uh, of, you know, Aaron Fleck, and I found that the number of senescent cells was very low in his blood, you know, tell me a lot. Tell me that aging is only one factor here, but there is a lot of thing you can do. But, but what I'm saying is, you know, clearly the problem that I, I would like you to get out of this meeting today, the problem is with stem cells, quantity do not equal quality. It's like everything else. I mean, guys, you have been in the business world and everything, quantity sometimes do not equal quality. If you have a football team, you can have, you know, 50 players, but if only three of them are really running the team, then those three the quality of those three, you know, manage to win championships. So for stem cell, the lesson number one is this is not a number game here. This is a quality game. The, you need someone who harvests your stem cells who has been stem cell biology, not someone who has a MBA from Harvard. And the only thing that they're thinking about is to make money. I'm coming in 
to try to do the real science because me, I want first thing first, I'm going to look at all your blood. Secondly, if I found that you don't have a lot of stem cells, I can put you in treatment before I harvest the stem cells, you know. And third, you know, I'm going to do the harvesting. And another thing that we're doing as well, and, uh, you know, I, that's very important, is for many years, for many years, you know, we try to improve orthopedic care. We try to improve cardiac care. We try to improve, you know, neurosurgery care. And you know what we do in science? We're trying to do the surgery better. We're trying to improve the success of the surgery. The problem that we have with this is those surgeons are really on the top of their world. They are really good. So me, what I decide to do here is an optimiza optimization, you know, uh, treatment that we do to the patient. I'm saying instead of trying to improve the surgeon how to cut an ECL, maybe I need to improve the patient. So before you come to our treatment, so what I do is one month before, I give you a drug or a supplement to reduce inflammation. So when you come in, I optimize yourself to, an optima, to a better surgery. So the surgeon, when you do surgery on you, you have less inflammation, less pain, better outcome. And when you leave the institute, what we do, we give you another drug called a blood pressure medication that we're using now to block fibrosis. And that is, you know, we have found, and we just got a $6 million grant from the NIH on this. It's an optimization strategies that can be applied to all surgeries, but I'm not trying to improve the surgeon outcome. I'm not going to try to improve the tool he's using because he knows what to use. I'm trying to improve you. I'm trying to make you optimize for surgery, before surgery, reduce inflammation, after surgery, preview scar, and I can tell you guys that to come back to your question, if you don't have a lot of stem cells, I'm going to try to do something to increase the number, to increase the quality. But when you come to be treated with your stem cells, I'm going to try to improve you to be the better recipient of your own stem cell by reducing inflammation, reducing scar. This thing, guys, is brand new. I, you're probably one of the first group that I talk about this, the optimization protocol. And if it worked for orthopedics, it worked for neuro, it worked for cardiovascular surgery because the main problem we have with surgery is always the first thing, pain, inflammation, and the second one is scarring. You build scar in your hip joint, you build scar in your heart, and that's really, you know, what created the problem. And, you know, wait, go ahead. Just real fast, so d doctor, you know, we, we, we spoke earlier about the new facility. When, when can we start, I mean, I, I would sign up right away if you were operational, like when can we actually call you or come schedule visits, things along those lines? I'm sure everybody in this call has that same question. Yeah, no, that's, that's obviously a very good question. And, and what I want to do is I would like to start now. Yes, the building is going to be ready, you know, in March of 2022. But what about to start now? So now I'm talking to Dusty Anderson to set up a platelet-rich plasma bone marrow aspirate, you know, facility right there in Aspen, in the Aspen hospital that you have there. The second thing is I would like to do maybe, I would like to go and meet with you in person and you know, maybe in the next few months to talk about you know, more in direct, what, what is my vision, what I try to build. And I can always tell you guys that you know, uh, you know, sometime you know, what you can help me is to accelerate this. Because you know, right now is our building the facility, so we're well covered to build a facility. But now, if you want to support you know, this, you know, this you know, operation that we're doing, that can accelerate the process. I can hire people faster. I can be up running right away. But my goal right now for the beginning is, you know, if you wanted to be part of this, I will tell you, you can come to see us in Vail while we're sitting up in Aspen. You know, that's one alternative you can do. But I heard that some people in Aspen, they don't go far away from the runabout. So I think the second thing will be for me to set up with Dusty Anderson something in Aspen right there and we can start to test your blood because what we do, the first thing, as I told you, I take your blood, I look at biomarkers, I look at things in your blood that nobody looked at before because now we know the, 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 all the markers, the toxicities and everything. And after this, when I set up this, then the next step will be, can I optimize you for stem cell banking? Can I optimize you for this or that? And, and the goal thing too is, you know, one of the things we're very uh, interested by is you know, think about it, you know, for many years, for 100 years, if you have to have surgery, let's say you plan a surgery for you, a bone surgery or ankle surgery in December, what's going to happen December 6, for example, what's going to happen in December 5, a nurse will call you and said, 
hey, don't drink after midnight, don't eat after midnight, don't take any blood thinner. Don't, of course, if you smoke, stop smoking. That has been the same thing for 100 years. They did this for your father. They did this with you. They did this with your grandfather too. So now what we, we're doing is, let's say if you have a, a surgery in December 6th, on November 6th, the nurse called you and said, we're going to send you 30 pills here. You're going to take one pill a day. And, and after this, when you come in, then we'll reduce your inflammation. And after this, we send you home with, uh, with uh, 30 pills. So this thing can be done. I mean, you know, even if you're an Aspen and we're not operational, I, be, I will be more than happy to meet with you one by one and tell you, you know, what we're planning to do, when we're going to be operational in Aspen and, and will it. But also that I can tell you that, you know, I can go in Aspen, take your blood and test it in veil. So they, there is a lot of things we can do. My goal is to make sure, guys, that I know in Aspen you have a regenerative medicine clinic, you have stem cell clinic out there. I just want you to make sure that their treatment, and it's very easy, go and look see what they do, see how many FDA approved clinical trials they have, see, you know, what they have published in the past. That's very important because, you know, sometimes we're doing it the right way. And sometimes you have people that cut corners and tarnish the field. And after this, we have to pick up the, the, the pieces and try to rebuild this field. Stem cells is very important. LTHing is feasible. The problem is you have to do it right. And sometimes is, you know, it's you, you have to be patient a little bit and to go on the safe way instead of creating problems that you may regret down the road. I think Aaron is ready to have an ice cream social uh, and invite everyone over. The, uh, uh, can you stand up, stay on a little longer, Johnny? I know you have a busy afternoon and we're after one o'clock. Yeah, one thing sure. I, can say, I can say here is that, you know, I have Catherine with me, you know, from my, in my office here. She's based in Aspen. Catherine is basically my right arm there. So in other words, you know, I can make sure that Greg has, has her phone number. So that would be a person to talk to, to call. And she has direct access to me. So, you know, I will be more than happy to go and spend a few days with you out there and enjoying, you know, the Aspen fall because we, we already got a lot of snow here in Vail. I'm sure you got some snow in Aspen as well. Um, yeah, I can take one or two more questions, you know, uh, depending if there is a desire for more questions. Go ahead, Ray. Uh, doctor, you mentioned that AI is central to your whole program. Um, as you know, you have to train AI, and, and to do that, you need a lot of data. Um, I wonder how a small, you know, is that data that you need available already? Or if not, how are you going to collect it? Well, I think, you know, Dr. Stedman, I've started this clinic on the basis that, you know, you come here, you get surgery, and we follow you for almost, you know, yes, patient that we follow 20 years. Data point, we come for MRI, we're looking at this. We already have a lot of information in our bank. We have all, we have a clinical outcome program where we have all those data points. We have a lot of information already that we would like to feed, you know, put in an AI program. But all this new LTAging thing that I'm talking about, you know, so we don't have a lot of information yet. I mean, we're building. I can tell you that I started this program in November of 2019, and I have 251 person from the Vail area that are in my book that I did all the full profile, that I look at all their markers. So we're starting with 251 patients right there. So I have all their data. But I want to tell you to answer your question directly too is, there is a lot of thing that I don't know today that I'm gonna to know tomorrow. So that's also something that I would like this bank of data to be, uh, to be set up in a way that I can feed in that bank, you know, as I wish, you know, knowing that new markers now are coming on, you know, on a weekly basis for LTH aging. But yes, we have a lot of information already, but a lot of thing, we have 251 patients here in Vail that has been tested, you know, um, you know, for senescent cells and, and biomarker for aging. And, and, but I have, you know, to do a lot more and, uh, you know, clearly, you know, artificial intelligence. I really believe that this is where, you know, the future is because yes, you can have all this information together, but you need to be able to put it all together 
to try to make sense out of this. You know, the, you all remember the full genome. You remember when, you know, uh, in early 2000, they said, hey, you know, we're going to know the full genome and, and you know, it's going to cost a lot of money, but we're going to know all your genes and we get all this information. And now we realize that that was too much information. We don't even know what to do with it. So now I think, and I don't want to make the same mistake that we have done 20 years ago with the full genome. I want to set up something where, you know, I can start small, but I can build upon it. But that's something that we're very excited to build upon, you know, in Aspen. Anyone else with a final thought, question, quickly? Aaron, let's, let's go to Aaron and uh, let him close this out unless Chris comes on, uh, because Dr. Hewitt is already 15 minutes over what he said was his limit. I want to thank uh, Johnny. Uh, we've been working on this for a long time. Uh, and this is so beneficial for all of us to get this information. And thank everybody that's been on this call. Uh, Catherine, Greg, and I have been working on this project. I can't, at least, how long, uh, Greg? couple years? Yes. Um, and we are going to have many meetings in Aspen, maybe dinners. Uh, we're trying to plan uh, a few right now. And we will be in contact with everybody that's on the call. And we hope that you'll t tell your friends in Aspen about it so we can include them in future meetings, because uh, Johnny only spoke about a couple, but there's so much more that he has done that we should know about. And we want the people of Aspen and the country to know about them. And we're going to do things to promote the information. We and thank a, you again. We should have a ski instructor group here. One thing I want to say, first of all, you know, thank you for having me today. And I received a couple of questions from Elliot Levy and Chris Tipton. What I'm going to do is I'm going to answer them by email and I'm going to send it to Catherine and she's going to send it to you as an answer, you know, after the call. So again, if you have any more questions, please, you know, contact Kate, uh, Catherine, you know, she will be the person that, you know, you can reach out to and she has direct access to me and I'm going to answer your question, you know, as, as they come. Yeah. So thank you very much for your time. And, you know, I'm looking forward. We're looking very forward to start to work with all of you right there in Aspen area. Thank you. It was a yeah. terrific presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, this is recorded. You'll be able to watch it uh, uh, in a couple of days on the Aspen Mastermind website. We invite you to go up there and uh, take a look. The website has uh, turned out very nicely. Uh, if you know of anyone who wants to join us, they can register up there as well. And it's also possible for you to make a contribution uh, to the 501c3 Aspen Mastermind organization, which would be greatly appreciated. Um, I thank you and uh, a, great, a great group today with lots of wonderful questions. So join us next week. Thank you all uh, for being such an engaged audience and uh, we'll see you soon.